How Elizabeth II protected husband from Meghan Markle, Prince Harry's his shenanigans. Queen Elizabeth II came up with a plan to stop showdown talks with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry getting to her husband. A new book claims the monarch asked Penelope Natchbull, Countess of Burma, to take Prince Philip, then 98, for a drive during a summit with the young royals. Ingrid Seward writes, The Knife Edge meeting came after the Duke and Duchess of Sussex announced their plans to leave royal life, giving Elizabeth 94 just 10 minutes notice, according to biography Prince Philip revealed. The book describes how the Queen knew they were unhappy, had not been aware of the intention to live half in, half out of the royal family, which Philip believed was impossible. Seward writes, the Queen refused to allow the shenanigans to get to her husband, so when she called an emergency summit at Sandringham on January the 13th, attended by her son, the Prince of Wales, and grandsons, Prince William and Prince Harry, as well as their f- senior advisors, she asked one of the house guests, Countess Mountbatten to drive him away from the house at least for the duration of the meeting while they sat in the long library on the ground floor and thrashed out a solution that would allow Harry and Meghan their freedom without bringing the royal family and the crown into disrepute. Philip remained out of the way. Buckingham Palace later released an unusually personal statement from the Queen saying that the family were entirely supportive of Harry and Meghan's desire to create a new life as a young family. The talks were known in the media as a Sandringham summit as they happened on the Sandringham estate in Norfolk where the Queen traditionally spends Christmas and New Year. Meghan and Harry had uploaded a detailed plan for how they intended to continue to serve his grandmother while splitting the time between North America and Britain. Finding Freedom, a biography of Meghan and Harry published this summer, describes how they left the Queen devastated by announcing the plan to the world without agreeing it with her first. In a book, Seward writes, it must have come as a heavy blow for Prince Philip to know that his grandson would be more or less giving up his homeland and everything he cared about for a life self-centered in North America. Philip knew leaving was not a decision that Harry made lightly and could not grasp exactly what it was about the family firm that made his grandson's life so unbearable. As far as Philip was concerned, Harry and Meghan had everything going for them, a beautiful home at Frogman Cottage, their healthy son, a unique opportunity to make a global impact with their charity work. For a man whose entire existence has been based on a dedication to doing the right thing, it appeared that his grandson had abdicated his responsibilities for the sake of his marriage to an American divorcee in much the same way as Edward VIII gave up his crown to marry Wallace Simpson in 1937. Elizabeth II, her secret plan for Meghan and Harry before the Mexit. A few months before Meghan and Harry left the British monarchy, Elizabeth II was considering a backup plan when she noticed that the Sussex couple didn't feel out of place, an idea that came to her from her own experience several years ago. In March 2020, the departure of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry from the royal family caused a thunderclap among the Windsors. Unaccustomed to seeing their senior members leave their royal obligations for a family away from the crown, however, she was surprised by the choice of the Sussex couple. Elizabeth too felt for several months the ill-being of the Duke and Duchess and the difficulties to find a place within the family. That's why she planned a secret plan for them to delay the exit she felt was coming. In his book, Battle of Brothers, biographer Robert Lacey reveals that Elizabeth II suggested to Meghan Markle and Prince Harry that they move for one or two years to Johannesburg, South Africa, to live an ordinary life as they wanted. So much, especially for their son Archie, relays the mirror, a plan which was obviously swept aside by the Sussex couple who preferred Vancouver then Los Angeles. However, this idea was not new to Elizabeth II, who herself chose in the past to move away from the United Kingdom. Before taking up her duties as a sovereign, Elizabeth II's happiest years away from London. While she was crowned princess, Elizabeth II left to live on the island of Malta from 1949 to 1951. Already very attached to this island, then under British protectorate, and where she stayed several times after her marriage to Prince Philip. It was then that the letter had obtained the authorization of King George VI to resume service in the Royal Navy that he was assigned to the destroyer checkers in the port of Valletta. A few months after the birth of the Prince Charles, the royal couple then settled in the Guarda Mangia Villa where they notably escaped court protocol, leading a simple life under the Mediterranean sun, far from the worldly events 
with however some official commitments for Elizabeth II appeared in the Queen's life often described by her biographers as her happiest years 